Hi, it's Tamika, and um, this morning in Facebook, I promised three videos for today. One about my two-year band anniversary. so I've already made that. It's uploading right now. And the second one was um, actually a response to a question that Band and Wendy or Proof Weight Loss um, WLS Works YouTube on Facebook um, asked last week. And so here's the question. When she asked the question, it was a day after me um, getting to my second year surge anniversary, And I said, you know what, that's an awesome question. Sometimes there's questions that are so good in Facebook that um, just simply trying to type a response would do it no justice. And so I uh, promised that I would blog about it. So here's the question. As WLS peeps living at goal and maintenance, what has changed about your daily living? Are you more relaxed as you move through the world? What changed for you after hitting your goal and moving into maintaining versus losing? Is it food, exercise, water, social situations, career, what? Or did nothing change? So, um... I would say, you know, when I first hit go, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do with that. And so then I switched um, my talking. And if you look back over some old videos, um, I switched my talking into, yeah, I met go, um, but I'm going to just let my body do what it's going to do naturally, right? But I never called go. I never said, yay, I made it. Until, <clears throat> I don't know if it was one or two months later, um, that I finally acknowledged the fact that I had met my goal. When I was 288 pounds or 274 pounds by the time I hit the table for surgery, I said, my surgeon did not give me a goal weight, uh, told me to figure out what my goal weight should be or was going to be or what I wanted it to be, and I said 170 pounds. And so... Um, Throughout this whole journey, I had been working towards getting to 170 pounds. Um, and then I got to 168 pounds one day. Um, and then I changed my thoughts into, no, that's not it. That can't possibly be it. Um, I just really did not know what to do with going from getting on the scale that was constantly moving to getting on a scale that was standing still. Um, and so <laughs> that's one thing. And I remember talking to the bestie and I was, um, you know, telling her in the very beginning, get ready for that and get ready for that mentally. Um, because if you are a person who gets to the point or you ever have gotten to the point throughout your journey and maybe you're losing uh, four pounds a week, and then you get on the scale and um, you've lost a pound or two pounds and you don't necessarily know what to do with that. Um, think about the day when you are going to get on the scale and it does not, it hasn't moved at all. Um, think about getting on that scale day in and day out or week in and week out or month in and month out and it still says the same thing. Um, know that that's going to happen and be prepared for that and know that that is okay if you have gotten to the point where either your surgeon or you want to be. Um, be just be prepared for the fact that one day the scale's not going to move. Um, because I wasn't. Like, I just sort of was like, okay, um, there was this excitement associated with losing, losing, losing and, and the progression um, and the feeling of accomplishment associated with that. And then one day it was like nothing. <laughs> but it is something. And the something is keeping it there and making sure that you're not going in the opposite direction. And it took me a minute to process through that and understand that living in maintenance is just as great as going through the losing phase. Being able to keep the scale right where it needs to be, 
whether you're a person who gives yourself a five pound range or a 10 pound range, whatever that's going to be, like don't set like one number and say like, I always want to be 142 pounds. Um, realistically, you know, you're not going to get on the scale every day and that, that scale is going to say 142 pounds just with things that go on in our body and what we eat and drink and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so if you give yourself a range, be okay with knowing that you're going to be within that range and you have to work hard to make sure that you keep yourself there. And so it is still following the rules, doing what you need to do on a daily basis. Um, all of that is still important once you get to maintenance. Um, let me see. Let me pull this thing back up again. Um, has anything changed uh, uh, about your daily living? Um, no. Because... And I think I sort of just said it because I'm still needing to follow the rules on a daily basis. I'm still needing to figure out how to get my protein in. I'm still needing to figure out how to get my water in, get eat good quality foods, um, move my body as much as I can within um, my constraints. So all of the rules that I was given the day that I was getting ready to be discharged from the hospital... Um, even in maintenance, I still need to follow those rules. It's not like you sort of get to a, a place of I've arrived and now throw that stuff out, out the window. No, you still need to keep at it each and every day. Each and every day. Um, there's a quote that I have in my uh, info section in Facebook. I wish I had it up so that I can read exactly what it was because it was good when I first said it. <laughs> Um, and it used to be on my website, and I put it um, over there on my Facebook page. But um, and, and it's something to the effect of, you know, uh, winning when it comes to weight loss surgery is making good decisions day by day, um, and making sure that that you realize what goes in your mouth counts day by day. Uh, and, and it sort of boils down to a day-by-day, decision-by-decision, bite-by-bite situation. Um, and that is going to have to stay with us for the remainder of our lives. It, I don't, you know, it just, the reality of it is um, we can never throw that stuff out the window and uh, expect to live in maintenance. It's just, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. Are you more relaxed? I'm more relaxed. Um, because at some point it becomes second nature. Uh, you know, I was uh, talking the other day about, you know, what rules do you follow when it comes to eating and drinking? Well, my surgeon said, stop drinking 30 minutes before you eat. Don't eat and drink at the same time and don't drink again for an hour after you eat. Okay. Uh, still to this day, two years out, when I finish eating, I glance at the time. Usually it's like my laptop if I'm working. I glance at the time from my laptop. If it says uh, it's 1.20, I know that I can drink at 2.20. It just, um, it, it, and it becomes a way of life. Um, you know, if I go out to a restaurant, I sit down and, and I order hot tea, and I know that I'm going to have to talk about something for a minute. I know that, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I have to figure out what I want to eat, but I have to stall things. I have to stall things a little bit. Because I know that when I drink that tea, there has to be 30 minutes before I can start eating. And so everything is sort of timed. And, you, you know, you, you, once you establish those things in your life and you live in that way, it really becomes second nature. I thought I would die. When I was first reading on, on obesity help, um, when I first joined over there, when I was thinking about lap band and I was reading about no eating and drinking at the same time, I was like, I'm going to die. I am, that is not possible because I'm a big drinker. I used to be a big drinker. Um, I can't guzzle anymore with my lap band, but I used to be the person who was, you know, would sit at the Cheesecake Factory and, and have easily three to four strawberry lemonades. Yeah. Can you imagine the calories? <laughs> but I'm eating, eating, eating and drinking, 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 drinking. Um, and so the thought 
was suffocating of not being able to eat and drink at the same time. But I tell you, once you start doing it, it becomes sec second nature, no carbonation, um, you know, all that stuff. So it, it, it really does not um, impact my day-to-day -day living. Now, I can tell you this. Let's see. What changed for you after hitting your goal and moving into maintenance? What changed is I needed to um, psychologically adapt to the fact that, uh, you know how people talk about people who are overweight are sort of invisible. Um, and, and then that moved towards people see me now. And so that was a very big, 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 big struggle for me, even now. Um, you know, that attention that I never necessarily completely always had to deal with. Um, trying to figure out how to deal with that. Trying to figure out, the, you know, trying to go through life knowing that I'm not invisible anymore. For both sexes, um, male and female. Not saying that females are... Uh, attracted to me or coming on to me or anything like that but just you know when you walk in the room when you walk in a room when you're walking down the street when you're just going about your day-to-day -day life um, uh, you tend to become invisible when you are obese and then when you get on the other side of that when there's victory over um, you know not winning that whole battle against obesity that sort of social type stuff does change Let's see, I think my phone keeps like uh, doing something weird, so I keep going away. Mm. So yeah, I talked about some things changing. Um, for me, uh, being a weight loss surgery person, um, being a lap bander, a bandster, um, however, you know, a person who has Tallulah inside of her, because that's my lap band's name. Yeah, I named her Tallulah, my trusty tool. Um, is my life different? Absolutely. Um, do I think that I'm on a diet? No. Do I think that this has been a lifestyle change for me? Yeah. So, and I, and I talked a little bit about, you know, the checking the time before I get ready to um, drink, uh, reading labels, trying to make sure that I have enough protein in each meal, or in my mind, it's a bust. Like, if you know, if I don't have at least 20 grams of protein in a meal, I feel as though I'm wasting my time. You know, all of those things are associated with a lifestyle change and not necessarily associated with a diet. Has my diet changed the things that I eat, the things that I um, put in my basket and bring home? Definitely, those things have changed. So the things that I eat, so my diet in that sense has changed. But how I have approached this whole lifestyle um, after weight loss surgery, I have changed my life. I've adapted my life to suit my lap band and to make sure that I'm uh, putting my place, putting myself in a place to be successful. Because I know that my lap band can't do it on its own. I have to actively participate in this. Um, that's one thing that I like to tell my um, lap band uh, success coaching clients is that you have to every day actively participate in this process. You can't think, okay, I got a lap band, I got something strapped around my stomach and boom, that's it. I'm, I'm just going to lose the weight and I'm going to get there and I'm going to be able to maintain it. Mm -mm. You have to every day um, make proper decisions and actively participate in the process. So I hope I answered everything. I went up 14 minutes. Um... I'll catch you guys later. I got another video to make.